If you haven't done so already, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. In order to calculate the total electric field at point P, we need the formula that allows us to calculate an electric field produced by point charges. Now, notice that because we have three charges in the picture, we're going to have to perform the calculation using this formula three times. So it might be useful to assign a label to each of the charges. So maybe we could call this charge one, this one two, and this one three. Now, of course, in this formula, K is just a constant that we will see is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Q is the charge, and then R would be the distance. We're going to notice in this particular case that the distance from each charge to point P is the same. It's the four centimeters. We just have to make sure that we convert that distance into meters. So instead of plugging in four centimeters, we'll be plugging in four times 10 to the minus two meters. Also for the charges, they're given in nanocoulombs. So when we plug those in, we have to make sure we multiply by 10 to the minus ninth, and that way we'll convert them to the standard unit of coulombs. So we'll set up the three electric field calculations for the three charges. So here are the three setups for the three electric fields. You might want to pause the video and make sure that all the numbers make sense. Notice that because of the absolute value that the negative 2 times 10 to the minus 9th charge will actually still return a positive result for the electric field. So we can pick up our calculators and crunch down these three numbers. And we should obtain the following three values. Notice the unit for electric field is newtons per coulomb. Now what we want to do in order to organize the information here is to put these electric fields into a table and then we're going to look at the directions and the components and so forth. So let's get a little organized first. So what we'd like to do is consider the x and y components of E1. Now charge one is a positive charge and we recall that positive charges produce electric fields that point away from the positive charge. So for example, at point P, instead of pointing a line towards the positive charge, we actually have to point it away from that positive charge. So we have to label an electric field E1 pointing in this direction here. So that's the direction of E1. Now if we extend a couple lines here, we'll notice that this angle right there would be equal to 30 degrees. And that's going to help us find the x and y components of E1. The x component would project horizontally to the right, and the y component would project vertically downward. And we can see that since the x component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle, that its value will be E1 multiplied by the cosine of 30. Cosine because we are adjacent. The y component is opposite to the 30 degree angle, and so we will see that the y component is E1 times the sine of 30 degrees. Also notice that the x component points to the right, so it is therefore positive, but the y component points downward, so it will indeed be negative. So what we'll do is we'll fill that into the table. Again, we're going to multiply E1 by the cosine to get the x component, and then by the sine to get the y component. Notice again the negative sign on the y component. Now we'll head over to E2, which is negatively charged, and we recall that on a negative charge, the electric field points towards the negative charge. And so we have a vector pointing along the x-axis to the left. We'll notice that because that vector lies along the x-axis, its y component would be zero. Also, we'll notice that because it's pointing to the left, it's going to have a negative value. So in essence, what that means is that the x component will simply be negative the value of E2. Finally, on to E3, we'll notice that because 3 is positive, once again, the electric field will point away from that positive charge. And then to find the components, we just note that we have a 30 degree angle. So the x component, which points to the right, would be the value of E3 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then the y component would be E3 times the sine of 30 degrees. Notice they're both positive because the x component is pointing to the right, which is the positive x direction, and the y component points up, which is the positive y direction. So we'll fill those values into the table. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add together all the x components and also all the y components to come up with the components of the total electric field. Notice in the y direction that when we add together the three components they actually add up to zero. So there will be no y component for the total electric field. But when we add together the x components we get approximately 17,958 in the unit for electric field again is newtons per coulomb. So in fact the total electric field can be reported as approximately 1.8 
times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. For the direction, just again notice that we only have a positive x component. So that means the total electric field points along the positive x-axis. So we could say along the positive x-axis, or you could even more simply say to the right. And so that's the direction of the total electric field. If we were going to label it on the diagram, we might come over here and draw a rightward acting arrow and just label that as the E total, total electric field. Now for part B, in order to calculate the electric force acting on the charge, we just take the product of the electric field and the charge. Notice that we converted the nanocoulombs into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9. Also notice that the charge is negative. I think earlier, if you go back and rewatch the video, you'll notice that instead of a negative sign, there was a 2 there. That was a typo. So let's just make sure that the charge is indeed negative 5. So we multiply this out, and we get negative 9 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. The negative sign indicates that the force acting on this charge would be pointed to the left. So you can report your final answer to part B as 9 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons to the left. And that would indeed be the correct force acting on that negative 5 nanocoulomb charge. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You are also welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.